Welcome to Apple Insider, everybody. It is Andrew here. Apple has just released the first beta of iOS 11.4, not even a week after iOS 11.3 made its way into the hands of the public. There are actually quite a few substantial changes here in iOS 11.4, similar to how we saw quite a few new features in 11.3. One of the biggest features of 11.4 is the return, and hopefully the final return, of AirPlay 2. You can see it right away with any AirPlay 2 enabled devices, like an Apple TV running TVS 11.4, which was also released in beta. Inside of the AirPlay controls inside a control center, you can see both my Apple TVs, bedroom and living room, with a little checkbox next to them, streaming audio to both of them simultaneously. When you do have them checked and enabled to stream your audio, they do remove the independent controls down from below them inside a control center. When you set up your Apple TV, it'll tell you to select which room in your home, for HomeKit purposes, that Apple TV is. And if you head to those rooms inside of your Home app on your iPhone or your iPad, you will see those Apple TVs now here in the Home app. You can't do any automations with them, at least not yet. Hopefully that is something we see in the future, but right now you can just play and pause. Anywhere you have AirPlay controls, whether it's in the music app or a third party audio app, if you tap on the AirPlay option, you will see all of them appear, both your non AirPlay 2 devices like the HomePod currently, because there's no beta out, as well as any AirPlay 2 devices like my dual Apple TVs. While no beta has been released for the HomePod, AirPlay 2 is bringing kind of support back to the HomePod for stereo pairing. It shows up if you have two HomePods available inside of the Home app, but you can't actually do it. It'll just tell you that you need the firmware update for the HomePod, but that's not released yet. There's no beta, so we still can't test that out. Messages in iCloud also seems to have returned in the first beta of 11.4. This allows you to store all of your messages in iCloud across all of your devices. When you delete something on one, it gets deleted on the other. It is very handy. ClassKit, the new framework that Apple announced at their Chicago education event, also is included in this beta, allowing developers to take advantage of that in their upcoming apps. So how's performance feel in the latest beta? It's definitely pretty snappy. You don't notice any real slowdowns or stuttering at all. It's way too early to tell anything about battery life, but as far as actual performance goes, running a Geekbench test shows promising results. When running the CPU test inside of Geekbench 4, I got about 4150 as far as the single core goes, and multi-score pulled in just above 10,000. If we go back into my history and compare that to previous tests, ones I recently took inside of the previous betas of iOS 11.3, I got not two different scores. They're pretty similar, 4167 on single score and 10,163. So a little bit higher on the multi-core score, but there is some variability just in running these tests multiple times. So they are pretty on par with one another. So these are the biggest changes we've uncovered thus far in iOS 11.4. There's definitely going to be smaller changes out there, so let us know down in the comments any changes that you may have found and we skipped out on. Which of these features is most exciting to you? AirPlay 2 or Messages in the Cloud? Let us know as well down below in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, like it and hit that subscribe button. Also, check out our price guide, which makes it extremely easy to find the best deals on Apple products updated daily. Be sure to follow us on social media and we'll see you in the next video.